£20,000 in an investment scam. Today, a Sussex man has described the gang who targeted him as awful people. Yes, Colin Wells was just one of hundreds of investors who fell victim to the international operation, which was run from Bexhill and Battle. The couple who were at the centre of the £4 million fraud were jailed last week. Natalie Graham reports. Brian O'Brien was the American brains behind the share dealing business which targeted unwitting investors. With his wife, Lynn Dalbertson, he persuaded 300 people to hand over £4 million. Colin Wells from Crawley was one of them. He paid £120,000 for the shares they offered him. You know, people just say, oh, well, what's the problem? You've just lost money. You know, it's only material. It's not. You lose more than that. You lose, you lose self-esteem because of the way they... They, they manipulate you, you know, they, they, as you go down and you start realising something's wrong, you know, emotionally it takes a big drain on you and they play on that. The scam began at this property in Little Common near Bexhill. O'Brien and Dalbertson then moved to this house near Battle. It's owned by somebody else now, but when the couple lived here, it became the control room for their sophisticated international fraud operation. As well as the supposedly secure company in East Sussex, O'Brien controlled a company in Limerick and two others in Barcelona. They made cold calls and sold overvalued shares in businesses such as an oil and gas company listed in Toronto. In reality, the money was transferred to a Guernsey bank account and back to the fraudsters. There was a UK address for them, there was a bank account in the UK, all the things that people normally would be very wary about where those addresses and bank accounts are overseas. They are clever frauds, they're well executed frauds. There is no shame in it, they are just, these victims are genuine victims of clever fraudsters. It affected me physically, emotionally, mentally. It just affected me in every possible way. It made me feel very ill uh, for some time and, and I felt a complete idiot. I mean, you know, I just, I just wanted to crawl up in a hole and die. I can see why people um, commit suicide. I really can, I can really understand getting to that point. It took six years to convict the Sussex couple at the centre of the scam. Last week, they were both jailed. Colin's name is on a so-called sucker list of people fraudsters believe will fall for their cold calls. But he's learned the hard way that some investment opportunities are too good to be true. Natalie Graham, BBC South East Today. Well, we're joined now by David Braithwaite, who's a financial advisor. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr Braithwaite. Natalie uh, just referred there to that sucker list. There are some 70,000 names on that. That's quite astounding, really. Just how widespread is this problem? It's quite widespread. The problem is at the moment, particularly, is where people are looking for increases on their investment returns. They're looking for other ways in which they can make more from their money. So people are naturally more susceptible. And I think also as a nation, we're very, very trusting of people and we will take calls and we're not prepared to be perhaps as rude as we could be to some of the people that are contacting us. So given that, how can people avoid falling into the trap? Well, if you are cold called at home offering you an investment opportunity and you are tempted to it, first thing is, is don't be suckered into it. Put the phone down, check the company out. You can go onto the FSA register, which is the Financial Services Authority, check the company is legitimate and do as much research as you possibly can. But you also have to ask yourself, would somebody with that investment cold call you at home when you're least expecting it? So you need to be going to get professional advice from people out there that are more than willing to help and put you in the right place. Uh, and we've heard a lot about uh, frauds like this involving over overseas companies. Is it quite unusual to hear about one based in the UK? It's more unusual, yes, a lot of them are overseas, but I think what's happened now is that a lot of people use such things like the Royal Mail here, for example, to target people through the post because it looks, again, more trusting. And we are, as a nation, unfortunately, a very trusting nation, and we will fall for these things, but we've got to be more and more aware of this, and promoting these sort of things and the fact that these guys have gone to jail is only going to be a good thing. David Raithwick, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, coming up on the programme in a moment,